Now, from Wish TV, your local news source, this is All Indiana Politics. Good morning and welcome to All Indiana Politics. I'm Brooke Martin. Democrats in Indiana have gone on offense, touring the state to celebrate what they call the successes of President Biden's American Rescue Plan. The events scheduled for every county in the state are also fueling speculation about Democrats considering a run for governor in 2024. One of those is former Senator Joe Donnelly. He's with our Richard Essex. Joe, I know that you have been touting the success of the of the President Biden's uh, American Rescue Plan around the state. How's that? How's that working? Um, it's working really well because um, what I wanted to do was to make sure that Hoosiers understood that we're really on our way back, that jobs are coming back, um, vaccination rates are up, that we see continued growth. We are looking at approximately 6% uh, economic growth for the third and fourth quarter. And so I wanted to make sure <clears throat> Hoosiers understood that things are coming back together. Um, we're moving forward. We've seen that the President Biden promised 100 million vaccines in the first 100 days. And it actually turned out to be 200 million vaccines, which has helped to give us our lives back. And, and it's wonderful to be able to be with friends, to be with family, and to spend time together again. This week, the president walked away from negotiations with Republicans on the infrastructure bill. Will that bill have a chance to pass this summer? Um, I, I think it will. And there's actually another group of uh, bipartisan senators who have come together to work with the president. It includes uh, Senator Portman from next door in Ohio, uh, Senator Romney, Senator Manchin, Senator Sinema, and some others. And so uh, President Biden really wants to get a bipartisan bill done. And so the first crack at it, um, they weren't able to come to a final agreement. And I, I'm hopeful that this group can do that. And now, speaking of S Senator Manchin, now he said that he would he would vote to end the filibuster, but he would he won't vote for the John Lewis voting bill. Is this an obstruction? Well, what I think is that there's two different voting bills out there. One is the um, what's called the For the People bill, and then one is the John Lewis bill. And so um, expectations, I think, are that the more likely one to have a chance for success is the John Lewis bill, um, which has more uh, support in both the House and in the Senate. And so I think as this process plays out, um, we may see more movement toward that bill. What's your message to Senator Manchin? Well, you know, he is actually one of my um, very close friends. Mm -hmm. And my message is, is as simple as this to everybody in the country. Um, understand what a patriot Senator Manchin is. And um, to Senator Manchin, my message is, as, as my dear, dear friend, I know your only concern is to do what's right for our country. And I think our country is stronger when more people who have the right to vote, who are registered to vote, get the chance to vote. For instance, in some states like Oregon, they have vote by mail and traditionally even in, in non-presidential years have turnout of up to 70, 75% with no problems with fraud or with any of the uh, other challenges that might be there. And so what, what I hope is that the process gives everyone's voice the right to be heard because when everybody gets a chance to vote, we get the best decisions. The Senate released its investigation results of the January 6th insurrection on the Capitol. Um, it cites several failures leading up to that day and the weeks before. Um, what have we learned? Well, that it was clearly an insurrection and that it was an attack upon our Capitol. I, I have been teaching national security at Notre Dame and uh, you know, it's changed the, from, from semester to semester, so to speak. But this semester, when the students asked me what's the greatest threat to our national security, I said, China is never going to attack us here on our soil. The Russians are never going to attack us here on our soil. The greatest threat we have were the folks who attacked our own capital, who threatened not only the police and the legislators, but also the people who work as cooks and as, as cleaning the building that that's a, that's a sacred temple to our nation. And so what we learned is that this was, a, it is, it was an insurrection. Much of it was planned beforehand and that we need to criminally prosecute those responsible. You have been touring the state. You've been the lead Democrat at a lot of events. 
and it leads one to speculate, are you running for governor? Well, you know, my only um, concern right now is to try to get the message out to Hoosiers about what is, uh, what is in these packages, the benefits that are there, the chance for our rural communities to get broadband. And so um, I, haven't, I haven't thought that far ahead. I'm just trying to, uh, uh, to help out and make sure that we can get the message out to as many communities as possible. I know we're still three years out from that, but it's, it seems like the field is really starting to stack up. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of folks who'd like to be the governor of Indiana, that's for sure. It's a, it's a very honorable position and, um, and, and something that can make a great deal of improvement in people's lives. Senator, I appreciate it. We appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so very much. Okay. Thanks, sir. Thanks. Turning the corner in the fight against COVID-19, two of the country's leading medical experts talk decisions on the mask mandate and the new virus threat to the nation. Welcome back to All Indiana Politics. Indianapolis city leaders have lifted most, but not all, COVID restrictions in the city. Council members on Monday approved an end to the mask mandate that had been in place for nearly a year in Marion County. Mayor Joe Hogsett and Health Department Director Dr. Virginia Kane say if the county can get to a 50% fully vaccinated rate by July 4th, the final restrictions will be lifted. Is that a realistic goal? Our Alexis Rogers is with former U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Jerome Adams. We know that the Indianapolis leaders hope to fully reopen by July 4th, uh, but do we see that happening? Do we think that that's a possibility for us all? Well, I'll be honest with you. When we look at a 40% vaccination rate in Indiana and Marion County and the fact that it's slowing down, and then you also have to dig deeper. You have to realize that that's on average. The African-American and Hispanic vaccination rates are much lower than that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still pretty far away from that goal. It doesn't mean that we can't get there. We just need to double down on working with churches, working with work sites, getting vaccinations in the hands of primary care physicians who people trust. We can get there, but we need to really push the outreach and we need the people to understand the way we get back to normal is through vaccinations through trusting one another to do the right thing. We were just talking about the fact that a lot of people are getting, you know, used to being with their families mm -hmm. again, having these really in-depth conversations. It's great. It's great being with family again, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. And that's happened yes. because you're vaccinated, I'm vaccinated, we can do that safely. Right. And one of the conversations that happened at our family kitchen table the other day was about herd immunity mm. um, and about will we really be able to have that? And since we got the vaccine now, like, does it wear off over the, the year? What's your response to herd immunity? and how long we will be vaccinated. Great question. And you and I were joking before this segment about how everyone's become a scientific expert. No one knew what herd immunity was last year at this time. But the concept of herd immunity is that enough people have been vaccinated that the virus can't transmit from person to person to person, even if one person has it. I talk, of, I talk about community immunity is the same thing. You have to remember a few things. It's the number of people vaccinated plus the number of people who've had a prior infection, that all adds up. So even though we're at about 40% vaccinated, we have many more people who have some degree of immunity right now in this community. So it is possible that we can get there, uh, but again, we just need to continue to answer questions in a compassionate way. Another thing to remember is it's all about the size of your herd. So if we're having a family gathering and everyone's been vaccinated, we have herd immunity within that group. But when you go out to the grocery store, to the racetrack, or to the Colts game, then you're relying on a much larger community to achieve those protective rates. And that's why, again, we all need to do our part within our family, within our community, within our schools to reach that level where we can say no masks, but we can also feel confident that the virus won't spread. Absolutely, and you're big on people understanding what they feel comfortable with, which is a big part of this, because we will still be seeing people wear masks even after this mandate. Well, absolutely. We shouldn't shame anyone for wearing a mask because you don't know what's going on in someone's life. You don't know if they're like my wife and they're dealing with a cancer diagnosis. You don't know if they're like my nephew and they're someone who's too young to get vaccinated but has asthma. Again, the best thing we can do is get vaccinated, but remember, not everyone can get vaccinated and not everyone's going to make the choice to get vaccinated. So we're going to continue to see mask wearing for, uh, for a while yet um, while we get to a point of herd or community immunity and while we see these viral spread rates continue to go down. 
Well, I know that we will continue to have this conversation. Thank you so much for hanging out with us because it's important to continue educating ourselves and others yes. about this. Thank you for helping me get the facts to the people because it's okay to have questions. It's not okay to let misinformation lead you into making an unhealthy choice. Dr. Jerome Adams, thank you. Thank you. And we welcome in Dr. Cameron Webb, the Senior Advisor for Equity on the White House's COVID-19 Task Force. Dr. Webb, good to see you. Thank you for, for joining us today. Yeah, thanks so, so much for having me today. I'm hearing some news about this Delta variant, scary stuff. Uh, explain to our folks at home what it is and what we need to do to protect ourselves. Well, you know, we've, we've seen different variants at different points in this pandemic. What happens is as the virus replicates, as we see more cases, we run the risk of more variants being created. And this Delta variant is the variant that's present in India. And what we found is it spreads faster than other variants. In fact, it's it's kind of outcompeting the Alpha variant, which we used to call B117, that was the UK variant. It's outcompeting that variant in the UK. And it's even showed up now in over 60 countries. It's here in the United States. It's a it's a risk because of how fast it spreads and also because it, it can lead to some, some serious disease as well. And so really want to make sure people know about this variant so we can do everything we can to protect against it. Does the vaccination that a lot of us have already gotten protect protect us from this specific variant? Yeah, so we, we've actually looked at this. And so the mRNA vaccines, uh, you know, do work really well against this, uh, this particular variant. So if you've had both shots uh, of your vaccine uh, after those two weeks, you know, you have that full protection. It does uh, work against this Delta variant. And so that's the reassuring news, right? We know that our, our vaccines still work against this variant. That's part of what, you know, certainly we want to tell folks today is that, you know, certainly getting vaccinated can protect you because, you know, as that variant, as it gets here in the United States and takes hold, we're going to see it outcompete B117 or the alpha variant, just the same as it's happening in other countries. And so it's so important for folks to, to start today to make sure they have the immunity in place before that happens. Good information, Dr. Webb. Uh, thank you for taking some time on a very busy afternoon. Thanks for having me. Can Congress come to an agreement on an infrastructure deal? Should it? Our political team talks that and more next on All Indiana Politics. Welcome back to All Indiana Politics as we welcome back Democrat Brian Gaddy and Republican Whitley Yates. Guys, thanks for being with us again. Whitley, Hello. let's start with you. Uh, we heard former Senator jo uh, Donnelly talking about the success of the American Rescue Plan. Uh, you have to admit, Indiana is seeing some benefits, right? I don't know if we can attribute those benefits to the American Rescue Plan, to be honest. I think you can contribute that to strong Republican leadership over the past 16 plus years and impeccable fiscal management. The truth is, you know, the president has been in office, what, 150 plus days. And so to attribute all of these things happening in those days to me would be asinine. The truth is the foundation was set by the previous president and the torch was passed on and is now being carried by President Biden. But Indiana in particular is seeing its success from the leadership that we've had over the past decade plus of Republicans being fiscally smart, bringing jobs here, and continuing to push Indiana forward. Brian, is that a valid response? Um, absolutely not. Uh, the previous president, um, president, former President Trump, his his response to the COVID-19 um, pandemic was disastrous. I mean, his response actually, uh, our economy was severely damaged. The, biggest downturn since the Great Depression. You know, hundreds of thousands of Americans lost their lives. And there's no doubt about it, the President uh, President Biden's response has been just outstanding. Our economy is back, America's back. Um, the economy is starting to, to take off. Um, COVID-19 vaccinations are up. Uh, COVID-19 is on the run, and that's all because of President Biden's outstanding leadership. Not everything outstanding right now. Uh, and that one of those things, infrastructure right now, Brian, uh, the infrastructure plan, is it dead? Uh, is the compromise plan coming out of the Senate good enough? Um, I prefer President Biden's plan, but I don't think it's dead. I think I do think in the end that there will be a, um, a bill passed and President Biden will sign an infrastructure bill. So I do think it, it, ultimately it will happen, but it's going to take a lot of negotiating, but it will eventually happen. A massive plan, Whitley. What are your thoughts on it? 
I think that the current infrastructure bill is just really a bill that's a Trojan horse for everything else. If we actually get an infrastructure bill that focuses on infrastructure as we knew it before President Biden became president, I think that we'll be good to go. Indiana has a fantastic infrastructure plan that is fully funded, and I would love to see the nation on that same path. Do you think that it should be state by state as opposed to federal? I think that we need the federal investment, to be honest. I think we need that federal investment, but we don't need to pack it with things that have nothing to do with infrastructure just just to get it through. I mean, it, it's the pork for me. It's the pork for me. Could any tax increase pass with Republicans in Congress, Whitley? Ugh, I mean, our right now, there's like a 5% tax on goods that, like, goods and services have gone up 5%, gas is out of control. I mean, I honestly feel as though we don't need to be raising taxes as we're attempting to come back and not the great American comeback that Brian was just talking about. Right now, like, our, our goods are high. They're trying to increase 28% taxes on corporations. I don't think right now what we need to be doing is increasing taxes. We need to allow people to get back into the rhythm and to start making money again and to start going back to work and all of these other things before we hit them with taxes. I don't think that that is the answer. Whitley has a point, Brian, with gases, inflation rising. Uh, is President Biden to blame here? Uh, he's definitely not to blame. And when we talk about raising taxes, raising taxes on whom? I don't think the average working uh, man or woman should have their taxes raised. But corporations, they definitely need their taxes raised. They have not been paying taxes. Many of them still, as I stated one time um, in a previous debate with Whitley, many of them don't even pay taxes. So the average uh, small or mid-sized business or uh, average worker should not have their taxes raised. But corporations, they can pay a little bit more if it means putting Americans back to work. But again, is inflation, who is to blame for this inflation for the gas prices? Uh, definitely not President Biden. I mean, it's just a lot of, well, who, who's ultimately blame? I would say the previous president, President Trump, because of his disastrous stewardship of the economy. So you just got to keep in mind, everybody, a lot of what President Biden is dealing with is, a, is the disastrous uh, stewardship of, of our country from President Trump. So um, I would definitely say that President Biden is not to blame for, for the things you're talking about uh, with the economy. In fact, the economy is coming back. It is people are going back to work. Um, the economy is, is turning around. Like I said earlier, the COVID-19 numbers are down. Um, President Biden is doing a great job. Whitley, you're shaking your head. I just think it's so funny that that President Biden is cutting Donald Trump's ribbons, right? We wouldn't have a vaccine if President Trump hadn't lessened restrictions for us to get there. So then to take credit for vaccinating all of these people with the vaccination that Vice President Harris said she wouldn't trust from Donald Trump, but is now touting it to us is just hilarious to me. You can't accept the good from President Trump and then anything else bad, you throw that over on him. You're cutting his ribbons now and you want us to be happy and proud of where we are, but we've got some issues. The jobs report showed, you know, that We've lost jobs. Um, so I don't understand if this American Rescue Plan was so great while we're losing jobs after printing all of that money and dishing it out to people. It's just, it's not working, and we need to find better and more fiscally responsible ways to continue to propel America forward. Well, something you don't hear often, I want to go back to the interview with Joe Donnelly that we had earlier. Uh, he called Senator Joe Manchin a patriot and uh, defended his decisions in the Senate. Brian, that's not a position you hear often from Democrats. <laughs> Well, Joe Manchin, it, he has to worry about his, the, the politics in his in his state of West Virginia, but he has to also understand that politics can't always just be about what's going on in your state. You have to think about the rest of the country, and I really wish that uh, Senator Manchin would understand that. I, I really do think, in many respects, he is being um, too difficult to work with, and it's not just him, but also Senator Sinema out in um, Arizona as well. But I think ultimately, in the end, they will come along and vote with President Biden and the rest of the Democrats. Democrats, Senator uh, Chuck Schumer, obviously our majority leader, um, will be working with them to get things passed. But overall, um, Senator Manchin does cooperate with the Democrats, our, us Democrats, most of the time. But there are some issues where he does go off on his own. I wish he wouldn't do that as much. But he Wait. is. But he's a he's a good man and he's a patriot. I want to give Whitley ten so. seconds here. Could Joe Donnelly win a race for governor in 2024? Absolutely not. No chance. Brian. He could definitely win. And Indiana is not as right wing as people think. If um, if Mike Pence had stayed here instead of uh, becoming um, uh, Donald Trump's sidekick, he would have lost and lost badly. Right, so I do her. think Senator Donnelly does, definitely has a chance to win. Brian Gaddy, Whitley Yates, thanks so much. We'll see you again. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks so much for joining us for All Indiana Politics. We'll be back here next Sunday morning at 930. You can also find our brand new All Indiana Politics podcast, part of the All Indiana Podcast Network at wishtv.com. Have a great rest of your weekend.